Welcome to Marvelicious Toys. We bring you news and reviews of Marvel toys, statues, and more. Because not all Marvel collections can be bagged and boarded. They're not just toys, they're Marvelicious. Of my Entertainment Earth exclusive Guardians of the Galaxy Marvel Legends set. Yeah, this is one that, you know, looked at it online. We talked about it when it went up for pre-orders. And just looking at it online, I was I was like, okay, I'm going to skip it. You know, there's a lot of stuff in there that I just don't need. But as soon as I saw this in person at Comic-Con, I knew I had to order it. <laughs> <laughs> was it love at first sight, Justin? It really, I mean, it just, it's a testament to how much you can do with repaints and part swaps. And even making a team that we have the majority of in the movie versions. Absolutely. And looking at it online, I mean, we did an exclusive reveal of the box art, if you remember. We did that just a few months ago over at the Venganza Media Gazette and talked about it on the show. And the box, it's got really cool Guardians of the Galaxy comic book art. But overall, the box, it looks gorgeous because it doesn't look all that different from the Book of Vishanti from Comic-Con or something, but it has a negative connotation in that it reminds me a lot of that X-Men shelf-warming Toys R Us exclusive five-pack. I know, but this one has that nice outer box. The X-Men had a nice outer box, too. That's true. And I'm a sucker for packaging, though, which is why Jerry and I get along. It's because, you know, he designs packaging, and I love to hear tales of packaging. And if something is in a fabulous package like this, I will, like, instantly be 99% there to buy it. (laughs) Yeah, it does. It definitely does have the same footprint as that X-Men set, same type of Mostly squarish, you know, front facing shape with the flap that opens and then they're kind of scattered in there in five, five in a row. But other than that, I think it departs from that set quite nicely, even with just the artwork and the star field and the purple and blue galaxy behind them. I think it's visually appealing color wise, too. That's true. The inner box, the tray in which the figures come, is very cool and spacey and better than the X-Men set in every way. I love that it's like a display piece on its own. You can just open it up and leave it. See, that's that stuff I like. The other thing this has going for it, too, is the characters are all unique enough in their outfits and colors that it's nice to look at. That X-Men one was everybody in their blue and yellow outfits except for Iceman. There wasn't a lot of lot of visual difference there wasn't happening. True. And the other thing that I noticed, and I noticed this when it was online, but man, it punched me in the face in person. You've got five characters in this set, but there is a load of accessories. You've got five different guns, four different knives, a sword, a potted Groot, a tesseract or cosmic cube, since this is comic based and alternate hands for Drax. So you've got a lot of just stuff in this box in addition to the five figures. Whereas the X-Men, you know, X-Men, they're mutants. They don't have a whole lot of weaponry. So that was kind of a bear set. (laughs) Definitely. But then looking at the figures, I think I was with you. A lot of this kind of felt like been there, done that. But there's definitely some newness here. We'll go through them in the order in which they're introduced in the movie. (sighs) All right. We will start with Star-Lord. Who? Star-Lord, man. This is the frightening I'm going to beat you up and steal your medicine, Star-Lord. With the big white eyes and the metal mask and this World War II-ish kind of helmet on his head, he does look a little frightening. He looks like a very scary Nazi. <laughs> Sorry, Star-Lord. <laughs> it does have a little bit of a SS helmet going on there. Now, this one, I will say, is straight up a repaint of the first version we got of Star-Lord. And that's a figure that was hard for people to get, though, because it was a Comic-Con exclusive. Exactly. And I actually kind of like the little paint differences here better. He seems, you know, a little more comic accurate than the first time around. And a little more paint detail going on, too. You know, even the buckles on his on his belt are painted silver and on his boots as well. Yeah, I definitely like 
the accents they've added, and it's a good buck and a figure a lot of people were wanting. I remember when this came out, I think it's two years ago now, and a whole bunch of people were saying, when can I get my Star-Lord? And I think you and I were both like, just wait, they've built it, they will redo it. The fact that it's still in an exclusive five pack is a barrier for some. I know it will be because you're going to have to spend... 120 on it and order it online versus 20 in a store. But the nice thing here is, is that if you're after that particular version of Star Lord, that means you're probably interested in the comic version of the team as a whole. And here you got it before that Star Lord was not with the rest of the Guardians. The only thing I think they could have done to improve this would be to give us an alternate head. I mean, there's a lot of accessories in here, so if you threw on the alternate head without the mask, because that's kind of how he's portrayed now. You know, he's dating Kitty Pride and lots going on there. So I don't read him in the comic with the mask on a lot. So the human head, nice to have, not a need to have. It's a really good version of this character. That, that would have been a nice touch. Second up, Gamora. In her comic outfit, obviously they're reusing parts here, but this is a real first time for this character. Oh yeah, never before done as a comic version. I like that they gave her soft goods. That's something we don't get a lot, and it is always great when we get it because so many of them have like things that would be too expensive to do soft goods, like Thor, and you just couldn't do, I don't think you could do his cape in an action figure in fabric and do it justice. I agree with you that you couldn't do it justice in soft goods. I disagree in general about your affinity for soft goods because I like a sculpted cape that looks heroic versus a piece of cloth that hangs there. But this actually is a quality fabric. True. And this is a nice thick fabric. It's not that really thin nylon stuff. It's two textures, actually. It's really soft and felty on the inside. It is a little see-through. You know, it's probably cheaper fabric. And I think you could get it to lay right. It's supposed to be like a poncho thing. And I think with a little bit of working it and doing it. Well, part of the problem, too, is they, like, seriously stacked her. So it doesn't lay right in the front. And her hair is molded on top of it. So you don't have a lot of mobility there. But... I think it's nice because it's got the ragged edges. It looks really cool. She's got some wicked green hair. You get the best of both worlds here because you don't have to choose. You can use either her nice fabric cape or you can use the molded plastic cape. And you from there, you pick which head you want to use. One head has the, the hood sculpted on while the other one has her hair flowing to the back. When in the package, I couldn't tell why did they give us two heads? But then, yeah, once I got it out, I'm like... Ah, they sculpted the hood on the other one. That's a nice touch. It goes with the plastic cape. Because I, I wasn't sure if there was a difference in the faces, and there wasn't. It was just the same face. I think the hooded one is showing a little bit of teeth, but other than that, it looked about the same till I saw the hood. Yeah, it's not a character change or anything like that, or sometimes head swaps are. It's just really, truly an alternate portrait for the same character. Yeah, I think it likes it. It's a little bit Red Riding Hood or something mystical like a fairy tale with the green, but... I also really like her paint job, though. It's so detailed with the gold stripes down the body and, like, the fishnet in between. She's not a modest character. <laughs> now, she's got a little bit of an Ula thing going on here with that <laughs> fishnet top and all that. And then thigh-high boots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like... For the most part, she's molded in that kind of swirly, iridescent, kind of tealy blue. And then they painted the green and gold over it. That's for her lower legs anyway. The rest of her body might have been done in the, the green plastic. It was. I've got a minor paint error and I see the green coming through. But this color scheme, you know, on paper, you don't think it would sound that great gold and green and teal. But it, it came off really neat looking. Yeah, I think it looks really good. But you get a couple different ways to display this character. And it, you know, is not the type of character that people would be opposed to possibly picking up two versions of for those who like to display multiple ways. She also comes with a nice appropriate sword for the character, too. <laughs> appropriate sword? <laughs> well, in the past, we've seen Hasbro kind of skimp on swords for characters that need bigger ones. Like, I'm thinking of Strife with his little tiny toothpick sword. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it was about to spear an olive from my martini, and that's about it. <laughs> and they didn't cheap out here, too. It's a two-color sword, you know? Like, sometimes they've done it where it's just, oh, it's all silver. There you go, have it. But this one is gold and silver, so that's a nice touch. 
The next up's the figure that angered me when I first saw it, but I'm going to recant some of the things I said. And I'm talking about Rocket Raccoon in his blue and red comic outfit. Now, let me guess. Why did it anger you, Arnie? Well, we first got Rocket Raccoon as the Build-A-Figure back when they were doing the mini Build-A-Figures right before Hit Monkey. We got the Rocket Raccoon, and he was a cool figure, and he came with that gun with the rocket on it. But he was a hard-to-get figure. The Legends were a little harder to find. He was a Build-A-Figure. Then for the Marvel Unlimited, as I guess they call it now, it's no longer the DCU, it's just the Marvel Unlimited, they painted him blue in this blue outfit and made him an exclusive figure that you could only get by signing up for their highest tier, nearly a hundred dollars. And yes, you got some exclusive comic covers. And yeah, I use the DCU or Comics Unlimited a lot to read comics and not have to pay the cover price for them. Just get the every comic they do just about six months after it was released. But come on, my impetus was the figure. <laughs> As it should be. And when I saw this in the pack, I'm like, some b- <laughs> <laughs> It's the blue outfit. And Justin pointed out the gloves were a different color. That's right. So it's totally different. I'm like, some bitch. <laughs> right? <laughs> but in my hand, they also gave us a different tail and a different head. Well, then that's not so bad, right? No, that makes it totally worth it, I think. This tail has more of a hook to it, and it's painted differently, giving him white stripes on the back. The biggest difference, though, with the head, the previous two we got had that articulated jaw head and, like, the grimace at all times. Here, you get a more smooth head. There's no jaw articulation, so I'm pretty sure it's cheaper for them. But it also just gives him more of a grimace appearance. You can see teeth there, so I really had to look hard. But no, there's no jaw hinge. Yeah, and it's almost this one. He's able to have a smirk rather than just a straight, you know, open mouth or closed mouth, which is a nice little touch. He looks very angry in this one, actually. Yeah, the eyebrows. There, there seems to be more detail in this head paint. He's got a lot more white on him than he ever had. And if you look, if you don't just write, the eyes are like beet red. Yeah. Yep. This is the one that I was worried about, too, Arnie, where it's like, yeah, come on. The the novelty's worn off of this buck, but nope, they found a way to make him interesting and fun. And it's the, it's the one that once I saw in person at the booth, I was like, OK, fine. Take my money, Entertainment Earth. <laughs> And you didn't subscribe for that Comics Unlimited pack, did you? I Nope, because that one was a straight repaint. And if that's, you know, if I'm going to have to pay a hundred bucks for a straight repaint, then, you know, at least I want four other people from the team with him. But that's, exa- <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say is I paid nearly a hundred dollars for this. So people who skipped this, you're going to get a very close approximation and four other figures for only 20 more dollars. Exactly. He does come with the exact same gun as the other ones, so not much change there. And he does come with that potted Groot accessory. (laughs) The three and three quarter inch accessory. That came in that multi-pack that I still see on clearance some places. (laughs) Most likely at Walmart. Sometimes online. Oh, sure. Yeah, back in the day when we got cool team packs from Marvel Universe. (laughs) I got to talk about the value of this pack. Yes, you get this Rocket Raccoon, but Rocket Raccoon was a -a Build-A-Figure. I know he's a little dude, but a -a Build-A-Figure that was kind of hard to get. And in this pack, you get another Build-A-Figure, but this one's a giant one. I mean, when we did the movie series of Guardians, we were building this big old Groot, and now you get a big old Groot. He is huge. This figure alone makes it worth it. Well, this is the same Build-A-Figure buck from the Guardians Marvel Legends. So this is the same movie body, just new hands and a new head. But it's a scary head. It's like mean Groot. Oh, yeah. It is definitely comic Groot. (laughs) It's like Poltergeist eating little Robbie Groot. (laughs) Now, this time it was cast in a much darker brown plastic. The The movie version was kind of almost like a chocolate milky brown. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, same type of paint job, you know, where they did the wash to get some of the dark colors into the, the branches and all that stuff. But yeah, the only newness here is the color and the head and hands, which, you know what? 
sounds like it might not work, but I think it works out just fine. Some people might have wanted to see Groot in his actual Guardian's outfit, which would have been cool, but that would have been a whole different thing and made this pack way out of the price line they wanted to get it to, you know? I agree with you. Again, I saw this on paper and thought, eh, repack with a different head. But in person, the fact that they went with this darker color and the fact that it is such a well done comic head. I mean, that's the key of it is it is the comic head, but it's just a great looking one. It's aces. It really is. Did you guys notice that they gave him like almost glowing eyes? Like they're like copper. So and they're set so far back in his head that if you look at it just right, they glow. That is very awesome. I hadn't noticed that until you pointed it out. Oh, yeah. Nice little metallic paint job on there. Mm-hmm. I like how the roots or branches on his head also look like a windswept back 80s hairdo. <laughs> and then the final figure in this set, Drax the Destroyer. And here was one that I was a little bit interested in when we first started up with the Legends and back with those Build-A-Figure waves, Drax came out and... I didn't really know who he was. <laughs> and now I have three Drax legends. <laughs> yeah, he's seen a lot of love in a short amount of time, really, in the six inch scale. You know what? This is different from both versions. Obviously, this is not the movie version, which was they made that one with all the sculpted little tattoo raised on there. And this is different from even the first release of the comic version because they're using the all new bigger buck. I think it's the, the Luke Cage barrel chested medium sized buck that they got there this figure and gamora are the two that could sell on regular cards and count as totally new figures we'd look at groot rocket and star lord as very close to versions that have come out before but yeah this drax is totally different he's got a totally different skin tone than the other one he's got gauntlets on that you can take off yeah he comes with alternate hands and the forearm pieces slide right off and these pants might be new to him i'm not sure i don't recognize these pants having all this detail on another figure yeah with the straps that come down and have a couple notches in them and they've painted it red and then the vertical or the horizontal stripe lines on the inner thigh there mm-hmm you know, I don't mean to keep harping on the legs because I've been looking at them and it's been bothering me. So you know what I did? I went and I grabbed my movie Drax. And guess what? Those are movie Drax's legs. Ah. But done, done in completely different colors that it doesn't feel like the same parts. Instead of maroon pants with brown boots, we've got silver boots and a nice shiny black pant now. But it fits so well with the torso, which is totally different than the Dave Bautista figure. Yep. Well done. Reuse of parts. There's a lot new going on here, even if, yeah, the buck is pretty common to the point of having two hexagon holes on the back. I think you nailed it like that, Arnie, saying that these this one and Gamora would be perfectly acceptable as single carded figures and not be considered repaints or reuse stuff. You know, I was I was in the booth talking to Dwight when I was drooling over these and he was kind of pointing out some of the things where they came from. And I was like, oh, yeah, good, good point. And I was like, well, where, what about the, the gauntlets on on Drax? He's like, those came from Strife. And I was like, oh, all right. But with the new buck and with these legs, he's got some serious posability going on. I'm getting a lot of cool poses off of him. His hands actually reach each other so he can do like the fist in the palm kind of look like he's going to put the beat down on you. He's got his open hand wouldn't really allow very much for the holding of the knives. I think if you're going to want him to use some of the blades, you're going to go for the closed green fists. But no, he is really good down to the lines they sculpted in his face actually look like realistic wrinkles and frown lines. Oh, yeah. So all in all, I got to say this set is worth one hundred and twenty dollars. If you look at the fact that figures now, they have an MSRP around 25 a figure. You're lucky if you can get it for 20 a figure. You'd be looking at 100 for five figures here. But the fact that there's a group build a figure, the fact that Entertainment Earth is offering free shipping right now, you're looking at pretty much a retail price on a set that's 
new enough to be cool all around. There's not a lot I can ding. And when I started talking about the X-Men set, I was, of course, reminded of the horrible paint jobs of the X-Men. And while my Gamora may have a see-through spot here or there, and her earrings that are painted onto her hair bled a little on the hair, this is overall really well done paint where it's hard to find those splotches whereas the x-men set for over a year i'd go into toys r us is this one any better nope (laughs) i think that's kind of a testament all across the line though i mean i think over the last year or so hasbro's really upped the the quality control on their paint so this is still for sale will it go on a discount or will it sell out that's always the risk you take justin you held off on this how are you playing it? Well, I thought I was going to be playing the long game, but like I said, as soon as I saw it in person, when I got home from Comic-Con, I, I got online and I ordered it. I had to. Well, you got yours. One lucky listener is going to get theirs because Entertainment Earth gave me another set of this to give away this show. Nice. And so we're going to do this just like we did the Diamond Select Toys Captain America giveaway. You got to go to our YouTube channel. You got to subscribe to the Marvelicious Toy YouTube channel and comment on this video, the Guardians of the Galaxy Marvel Legends review. And good luck to everyone who enters to win the Guardian set. You have to enter by August 31st and the winner will be announced in the first September issue of Marvelicious Toys. Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Marvelicious Toys with more collecting news and reviews at MarveliciousToys.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, make mine Marvelicious.